Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. But his word, which doesn't change, spoken by one who cannot lie, says, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. He doesn't, there, I don't see a condition in that, do you? I don't see where God says, if you will just keep on, you know, trying, I'm going to reward your efforts. I'm going to just, I'm, I'm there to cheer you on. I'm, it's, it's up to your strength, but I'm going to just encourage you. No, that's not it. I am with you. That's why David could face a giant. That's why all the heroes of faith in the Old Testament could do what they did, not because of what, who they were. They're people like us. But there are people who heard the voice of God and believed in him more than they believed in everything else around them. And that's God's word to you and to me today because every one of us, as I said, is facing things in our lives right now. You wouldn't even want to tell somebody. But there are struggles. And the word of God is to people who have struggles and questions and burdens in their lives and obstacles and mountains. And they're facing things that they're, they're, they're putting a smile on their face, but they're struggling on the inside. God wants to say, don't be afraid. I'm with you. I love you. I've called you. I've chosen you. That's your anchor this morning. That's my anchor. That's God's word to you, not just to these people thousands of years ago. This is God's word today, this morning. Praise God. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Now, dismayed, that's a person who just throws up their hands and says, ain't no use. That's our, that's our way of putting it. You remember how God warned Joshua, not, be, not to be dismayed. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. He knew Joshua was going to face situations that if you were to look at them humanly, they would be utterly impossible. But the question is, how do we react to what is humanly impossible? Do, does it cause us to say, there's no use, I give up? Or do we say, I'm looking at my God. My God has promised. And on the basis of his promise, I'm going to stand in the face of this and say, I can go through. I can get through this. God will bring me through. Nothing can defeat me. Th something may work on me. Something may accomplish something in my life. It will because God's going to use every circumstance in our lives to, to accomplish his purpose. We know that from Romans 8.28. But that doesn't mean it has to defeat us. Because God has promised. If you're leaning on your own strength, you're going to fall in the mud. But God's going to pick you up too. Praise God. Don't be dismayed. What is it in your life? Is it a personal weakness? Is it a personal need? Every one of us has got them. There's not a person here who has arrived Anybody here that's completely like Jesus? All you have to do is kind of step over to the other side and nothing will change. You're already there. No. Every one of us has got needs that look to us, seem to us to be insurmountable. Well, guess what? That's why we need a Savior. That's why I need a Savior. I need somebody who has all power and who's on my side and who loves me and who wants to, and who is determined to accomplish what he said he's going to accomplish. He is able to save completely those who come to him through Christ because he ever lives to pray for us. Where does the ability come from? Does he say we're able? He says he is able. He is able to do you know, we can look at circumstances around us and say, oh, my God, this is just, this is fatal. This situation is fatal. This condition is fatal. It's not. We have a God who is able to deal with every kind of thing that affects his purpose 
We have a God, and we need, to start, we need to stop looking at things that loom up before us, and we need to start looking at our God and saying, God is able. Lord, our eyes are upon you. Think of the prayer of Jehoshaphat facing an army of overwhelming proportions. There was no human way they could have defeated that army. And God so gave a victory, they didn't even have to fight that day. All they had to do was send the choir out in front of the army to praise, the, praise God and praise him for his goodness, and God took care of the other army. And all, and all they got out of it was about three days' worth of hauling good stuff back home. I tell you, we serve a great God. But you remember, you remember Jehoshaphat's prayer? It was a prayer that, uh, that came from somebody who, humanly speaking, had no answer. Said, Lord, look how they've come to cast us out of your inheritance. Lord, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. Are you in that place today? You don't know what to do. You just don't know what to do. Well, what does the Lord say? He just looked to me. Are you in darkness? You don't have any light for your situation right now? What do you do? You stay on the name of God. Stay on your God. Look to Him. Declare your faith in Him. Say, Lord, I, am, I don't know what to do. I'm trusting in you. Our eyes are upon you, Jehoshaphat cried. Oh, I'll tell you, there was a man that just did, what, did exactly what we need to do. He, wasn't, he didn't do that because he was somebody great, somebody strong. He did it because he was weak and needed God. Yes. Just exactly like us in that respect. God is a God who reaches down to the weak, to the lowest of the low, to the weakest of the weak. He's not drawn to the strong and the mighty and the proud. He's drawn to those who need him. He has the kind of a heart that reaches down. All the way down to where you are and me. Thank God. Oh, you need to stop listening to every other voice and start listening to the voice of God. If you're lying in a puddle of self-pity and dismay, get up. Stop looking at your circumstances. Stop looking at your feelings. Stop going by all of that. Start looking at your God. Amen. Say, God, I trust you. I know this may be dark. I know it may be painful. I know it may be difficult. It looks impossible. It is as far as I'm concerned. But God, nothing is impossible with you. I'm trusting in you today. <clears throat> Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. He is your God this morning. He's not just some God out there somewhere. If he has called you and chosen you, he is your God. And my God, we have a right to come to him. Doesn't Hebrews 4 tell us that we have the right to come freely before a throne of grace? Not a throne of justice where we have to deserve what we get. It's a throne of grace where people who are in need of something they don't deserve can come freely. Oh, thank God. That puts a whole different complexion on life, doesn't it? So God goes on and he says, I will strengthen you and help you. Are you weak this morning? Thank God if you are. The song we sang, let the weak say I am strong. Now, how could, how could I mean, that sounds like playing games with yourself. <laughs> 